going through this guys relatively quickly if i don't get through it i'll finish the video later and i'll post it so you guys can see it there's 25 questions i'm not posting the answers to this so if you want to watch the video later to get them all that's fine but i need you to follow along with me and understand all of the things that we've talked about with four three and four four are fair game for your test i'm giving you 25 problems here to go over your test is not 25 problems tomorrow Anything on your web assigned, 4344, four, four. anything in the notes, you guys are going to have to know. Like you said yesterday, I spent all this time doing web assign and I barely used any math. You're using math, you're just not doing a lot of computation, it's more application. So the first thing I'm going to bring to your attention are 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. You guys need to know the patterns. You've seen this several times in different classes. If I have a question like 1, 2, and 3, we're going to do all three of them, <clears throat> okay? You guys have to answer, and it'll say in bold, underline, it'll either say you want exact, no decimals, which means you leave it as a square root, or it'll say round to the nearest whatever. Okay, <clears throat> so in this number one, the pattern, I'm gonna use an arbitrary letter. I'm just gonna say J, because my name starts with a J, okay? Across from the 60 degrees is the root three, right? So I'm going to say this side is J root 3. Across from the 30 is whatever the number is, so I'm just going to call it J. And then this one, the hypotenuse, I'm going to call it 2J. The reason I'm not using X's or Y's is because that confuses you guys sometimes. But look at the information that they gave you. Where is the only side that has a number? The Y. The hypotenuse. J. Not the hypotenuse. J what? Root 3. Root 3. Do you guys see how it says 17? So you can set up a little equation here that says j root 3 equals 17. Well, how do I simplify this? How do I get j all by itself? Divide, divide by root 3. Divide by root 3. So I have j equals. Can I keep root 3 on the bottom? So it's 17 root 3 over 3. You guys see what I did there? So now I can figure out what the other two sides are. What is x equal? What did you guys just figure out, J? So X is 17 root 3 over 3. How would I figure out what this R is? Multiply that number by what? 2. So I have 2 times 17 root 3 over 3. Guys, this is just 2 over 1. Multiply across. What's 2 times 17? 34. So it's 34 root 3 over 3. However you were taught to do that, do it. I'm just showing you, if you set up a little equation for each one, it makes it not so difficult. Like if I come here to number two, what's the pattern for 45, 45, 90? One, one, and root two. So this is one, this is one, this is one root two, or whatever the legs are with root two. So what do you know if this side here is 3 root 2? What do you know x equals? x equals 3 root 2. Well, what do you know then y would be? Because right here, right here is where the x is or the j or whatever you want to say, whatever that side is. So it would be 3 root 2 times what? Root 2. So when I did this, guys... I'd have 3, what's square root of 2 times the square root of 2? 2. Square root of 4, which is 2, so 3 times 2 is, so y equals 6. But the first two questions on every single version are questions like this, and it says no decimals. If you do this in your calculator and you give me a decimal equivalent, I'm arguing it wrong. All right, think about the pattern. You can use any letter when I say the pattern. But if you use X, sometimes you get a little confused, but I'm gonna do it in blue. So, you see, so this is X, this is X root three, and this is two X, you guys agree? What, in this triangle, what is the side that they gave us that has a numerical value that I can use? The hypotenuse. I know that the hypotenuse is 22. That means I can say 22 equals two X. So divide both sides by two. What does X equal? So side y is how long? 11. What is side x? 
11 root 3. You have to know the pattern. You know the pattern? It's super easy. You don't know the pattern, you'll get the first two wrong. So make sure you guys are on top of that. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're going to go through this. We're talking, guys, about the six trig functions. All right, they showed me a triangle. They showed me where theta is. And they said, this is, this is the reference angle that you're talking about. What did they give me in regards to theta? Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. What, are, what did they give me? Adjacent. They gave me the opposite and the adjacent. In order to find all six trig functions, given this sort of information, what else do I need? The hypotenuse. So how would I first find that? Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. For most of these guys, unless it's a word problem or when I'm asking you to find sides and I tell you to round, I want an exact value. So this is 100 plus 225 equals c squared. So 325 equals c squared. What is the square root of 325? So when I break this down, it's 5 root 13. Yes? If you guys aren't sure about that, in your calculator, multiply 5 times the square root of 13. See what you get. All right, so now we have our opposite, our adjacent, and our hypotenuse. Everybody with me? Same thing as having our x, our y, and our r. So just depending on what they give you is what you're looking at. You guys are not going to need triangles drawn. I'm not going to give you triangles drawn. If you want to draw one yourself, that's fine, but I'm not going to give them to you. So sine is whatever what? Come on, guys. Sine is whatever what? But in this case, we don't, we're, in this case, with what we have, what is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be what? What's the opposite? 15 over 5 root 3, yes? Okay, simplify first. Anything going to 15 and 5? Anything going to 15 and 5? 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes in here. So I, this would be 3 root 13 over 13. Agreed? Okay, cosine. Cosine is whatever what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So 10 over 5 root 13. Simplify. This becomes 2 root 13 over 13. Yes? Tangent is what? Well, it is y over x, but with what we're using, guys? TOA. I mean, over 15 over 10, yes? Which becomes 3 over 2. Cosecant. Cosecant goes with sine. So it's 5 root 13 over 15? So this becomes root 13 over 3. Secant goes with cosine. 5 root 13 over 10? Yes? No? No. One over five. Yeah. Thirteen. Root thirteen over five. Alright. Okay, so this becomes one, this becomes I'm two. two. I'm so two. it's root thirteen <laughs> over two. <laughs> Cotangent goes with tangent. Cotangent is ten over fifteen. Which becomes two over three. Okay, so if they give you a triangle with two sides, you've got to find the third, then you can use your opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, that sort of thing. But if they give you the ordered pair, that's when they want you to use x, y, r. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. So you guys don't get confused with that. Don't be like, oh, I can't figure that out. Yeah, you can. All right, let's look at these next ones. <clears throat> okay, sketch a right triangle corresponding to the trig function. Blah, 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 use Pythagorean theorem. You don't need to sketch a triangle. If they give you the cosecant is 31 over 6, don't worry about drawing a picture and figuring out where the opposite is, where the adjacent is. If I talk about cosecant using x, y, and r, what is cosecant? So it's r over what? It's the opposite of sine, you told me? So it's r over y, okay? So in, in order to find the six trig functions, we need x, we need y, we need r. 
If you guys want to draw a triangle and then figure out which is the opposite, which is the adjacent, that sort of thing, that's up to you. But you're going to have to mark your triangle correctly given the information. I would just go with X, Y, and R. They don't even have to think about a picture. So if I look at this, I know that Y is 6, R is 31. How do I figure out what X is? Pythagorean theorem. So X squared plus 6 squared equals 31 squared. I'm not going to give you numbers this big, but you will have a calculator. But I want this in exact values. That means no what? Decimals. So we have x squared plus 36 equals, what's 31 squared? 961. 961. All right. Minus 36 from both sides. 925. Then what do I do? Take the square root, guys. What is the square root of 925? So we get x is 5 root 37. Now this just becomes the same problem that we have done 100 times. Sine is what over what? Tell me. Uh, y over R. Over R. So what is the sine here? 6 over 31. Good. Cosine is x over R, correct? What's my x value? 5 root 37 over 31. Tangent, y over x, what over what? 6 over, whoops, 5 root 37. Can I have root 37? No, so just rationalize the numerator and the denominator. You don't have to do with the 5. So you have 6 root 37 over, what's 5 times 37? 185, good. All right, secant, secant goes with what? Secant goes with cosine. Secant goes with cosine. You guys got to get on top of that. So it's r over x. So it's whatever what? Um, r over x. 31 over 5 root 37. Yeah. Rationalize. 31 root 37 over what's 5 times 185. Good. And then cotangent goes with tangent. It's whatever what? x over y. What is x? 5 root, 5 root 37. What is y? 6. There you go. You guys have to know the functions. You got to know the trig functions and the ratios. Okay, this is the exact same thing. If they tell me the sine is 12 over 37, what are they giving me? What is sine? y over R. So they're telling me X is something, Y is something, R is something. They're telling me that Y is 12, 37 is R. How do I figure out what X is? Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. And then what do we do? S cosine is X over R. Tangent, Y over X. Cosecant, R over Y. Secant. R over X. Good. Cotangent. X over, y. X over Y. Okay, I'm not going to do that problem. It's the same thing that we just did above. Do the math. Plug it in. Exact value means I want what is an answer? Uh, not the decimal. Not the decimal. I want a radical. Yeah. You guys are going to have some word problems. They are not, I'm not giving you a picture. You need to sketch one. It's real easy though. If you just think about it, a 23 meter line is used to tether a helium filled balloon. Because of a breeze, the line makes an angle of approximately 74 degrees with the ground. Which picture is correct? Top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. Think about it, guys. A line. A line is holding this balloon, right? Or whatever it is. It's holding something. And then, obviously, the wind, the wind it's breezy. It's blowing it left and right. So, <coughs> as the line is vertical and the wind blows, the line kind of slants a little bit. So, the line is slanted at a degree of elevation of 20, uh, 74 degrees. How long is this rope or whatever that they're talking about? 23. The rope itself is 23. That's the one that's, that's being slanted. Now, what are they asking for? How far the rope is from 
something else or how high the balloon or whatever this thing is? Draw a right triangle. It gives a visual representation. What is the height of the balloon? So what am I looking for? Bottom left or bottom right? The bottom left. I'm looking for the height. Okay. So now this is easy to do. How do I figure out how high the balloon is? Here's my right angle. So what did they give me? Okay, this is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse, right? Yeah. So you would say sine of what? Uh, sine of what? How, what is the angle? Or nine, oh, 74 oh, degrees yeah. equals X over, X over 23. 23. Set up your proportion, cross multiply. So X equals 23 times the sine of 74. That's a calculator problem. It says round to two decimal places. If I said round to the nearest tenth, how many decimal places is that? One. If I say round to the nearest foot, I want a whole number. You've got to pay attention to what they ask for. But what is 23 times the sine of 74? Um, so it's about how much? 22? Okay. There you go. You'll have two word problems. They're not going to be that difficult. You guys have to think a little bit about a, a line being tethered, but it's not going to be that. All right? Okay, you guys are going to have some word problems. That difficult. You'll be all right. Okay, so now if we look here, I'm going to do one of these. I'll do eight or nine. I'm not going to do both of them because they're the same problem. Guys, again, I'm not going to give you pictures. You don't need a picture. Let's do number nine since there's a negative. What are they giving me? in this ordered pair. They're giving me two values. What are the two values? They're telling me that x is 4 and that y is what? Negative 7. So I need to find how much r is. Yes? Okay. r is the hypotenuse. So I would say 4 squared plus negative 7 squared equals r squared. r is always going to be what kind of a number? Positive. So I have 16 plus 49 equals r squared. What is 16 plus 49? 65 equals r squared. How do I get r? Okay. Is there anything that I can break 65 into? No. Here is the same problem again. I'm going to find the sine. What is sine? Remind me again what sine is. Y over r. So I have what? So it's negative 7 root 65 over 65 once I rationalize it, right? You guys can get to the point where you can do that in your head. <clears throat> what about cosine? It's what over what? X over, R. X over R. So it's 4 over root 65, yes? Mm -hmm. So it's 4 root 65 over 65. Tangent, what over what? Y over X. Y over X. So it's? Negative 7 over 4. Cosecant goes with? So it's R over Y. Right? R over Y, which is? Good. Root 65 over negative 7. Secant goes with? So it's R over X. Tell me what R is again. Root 65. What's X? 4. And cotangent, X over Y, which is what? 4 over negative 7. Good. Does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. You don't need a picture. Here, do they give me a picture? Yeah. No. Do I need a picture? No. no. The point of a terminal side is in standard position. Exact value means leave as a radical. So I know that x is how much? Negative 8. y is how much? 18. What do I have to find? How do I find r? Pythagorean theorem. Then what do I do with all that information? Plug it in. Good. Okay. Terminal side. Determine exact value. This is the same exact problem, is it not? Okay. Let's go to. Let's go to. Let's. Here comes some thinking ones. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Do each constraint separately. The first one says sine is less than zero. What does that mean? Negative or positive? Negative. Negative. So guys, look here. 
with our acronym, All Students Take Calculus. What's the acronym? Smart All Trade Students Trade Take Trade Calculus, Trade. or a Smart Trade Class. Thank you. So, sign negative. What quadrant is sign negative? Yes, three and four. Because in A, sign's positive. All, everything's positive, so it's not here. And in quadrant two, sign is positive, so it's not here. Now, look at the second constraint. I look now, with the two remaining, where cosine is what? No, cosine is less than zero. What does that mean? Negative. Where is cosine negative? What can I cross off, the T or the C? So where does this angle lie? In quadrant three. There is a question on every single test that all the, all the question is is something like this. Your answer is going to be quadrant one, two, three, four. You got a 25% chance. Okay. Let's scoot a little bit. All right. These are the ones, the, the, these couple are ones I really want to look at here. I really want us to make sure that we understand what, how to answer these questions. If you're talking about a quadrantal angle, Guys, this is what they mean. Look, quadrantal means like 360, 270, 180, 90. Now, the way to say that is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, yes? What is the ordered pair up here for 90? How'd I get there? It's 0, 1, right? What is 270 then? Zero, negative one. 180 is negative one, zero. What's 360? One, zero. <clears throat> now, you don't have to worry about the hypotenuse and all this stuff. These are quadrantal angles. You guys can answer all of this just by looking. They're talking about where the sine, which is what value, x or y? y? Y. Where the sine is zero, but they only are telling us to look between 90 and 270. So right here on this side. Where is the sign, the y value, zero? Um, the y value, zero, is at 180. That's, that's the ordered pair you're looking at. So sine of zero, sine of theta is zero. Cosine is what value? X. So what is the value, this point right here, negative one. Tangent is what over what? Y over, y over X. So what's my tangent here? Zero. zero. Cosecant goes with what? Sine. 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 So it's going to be one over our Y. So one over zero is undefined. Secant goes with cosine. One over X. 1 over negative 1 equals negative, negative 1. Tangent, undefined. x over y. Negative 1 over 0 is undefined. Whenever they tell you the sine is 0, cosine is 0, they're talking about one of those quadrantal angles. The rest of them are all numbers. Here's another. Where does the, whoops, where does the angle lie? Okay, secant is greater than zero. Secant goes with what? Secant goes with cosine. Cosine's positive. Cosine is positive. Do you guys agree with me in A and C, correct? Yes. Cross off these two. Now I'm going to look. My second constraint is where cotangent and tangent are negative. Well, in the first quadrant, everything is what? Positive. So what am I looking at? What quadrant? Quadrant four. All right, another one. Look at the first constraint. Where is tangent greater than zero? Positive. A and T. So nothing here, nothing here. Cosecant goes with what? Sine. Where is sine negative? What quadrant? No, A is positive. Everything is positive in A. So what? Which, what, for? 
because if I want tangent to be greater than zero positive, the only two places that tangent is positive is the first quadrant where all of them are, and then here, tangent and cotangent. So then my second thing says sine and cosecant, sine and reciprocal are negative. Well, in the first quadrant, everything's positive, so this answer would be quadrant three. All right, make sense? Okay, when you get to questions like this, guys, this is important. They're telling you this, where the angle lies, what quadrant, they're telling you a lot of information. Because in order to do all our six trig functions, we need x, we need y, and we need r. When they told me the cosine, what are the two values they gave me? Cosine gave me x, and it gave me r. How do I know where the negative goes if they gave me cosine? They gave me x and they gave me r. What do you guys know r always will be? It's always the hypotenuse and it's always what? So I know it's negative 3, positive 5. You have to think through this. Now, draw yourself a little picture. If the angle lies down here in quadrant 3, think about an ordered pair in quadrant 3. The x and the y are both what? They're both negative. If you guys don't put that negative sign there, all of your trig functions are going to be wrong. Not all of them, but anything that concerns y, so four out of the six. You have, the second constraint that they tell you is giving you added information about the signs of your x and your y. Now everything else is the same. I need to find y in this case, right? So it's negative 3 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. Agreed? So 9 plus y squared equals 25. Subtract 9 from both sides. y squared equals 16. So y is, do you see how I got y is 4? But I really already know that y is what? Negative 4. You have to be able to do that. So now when you do your, your trig functions, it's easy. Sine is what over what again? y over r. So negative 4. Yep. Cosine is what? x over r, negative 3 fifths. Tangent is what? Y over x, so? Negative 4 over negative 3, which is? 4 over 3, always have to simplify. Cosecant goes with which one? So it's what? Which is? Yep. Cosine goes with secant, so it's what? R over x, which is? 5 over negative 3. Cotangent goes with tangent. So it's what? Which is? Negative 3 over negative 4. 3 fourths. Do you guys see, though, how this second piece of information was a huge, 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 huge benefit? Because it told me that my y value had to be negative. But when you use the Pythagorean theorem, you're squaring stuff. So that's why you have to check out that second constraint. Are we okay? All right. <clears throat> Again, this is, go this is telling us something here. I need x, y, and r. Once I have that, then the rest is just the same thing over and over again. They are telling me what pieces of information when they tell me the cosecant is 14. Cosecant goes with what? Cosecant is what over what? R over Y. So they're telling me that R is what? 14. They're telling me that Y is what? 1. And then they're telling me something about the R and the Y, the X and the Y values. Because they're telling me that the cotangent here is less than 0. That means it's what? Okay. So. If it's negative, I know it's not in which quadrant? If I know that I know that the cotangent is negative, I know it's not in what quadrant? Okay, I know it's not here. What did you guys tell me that cosecant goes with? Okay, cosecant goes with sine. I'm going to write that down right here. Because what do you notice about the sine and cosecant of this number? It's what kind of a number? It's, it's not 1. What is 14 and what is 1? Are they negative or positive? 
They're both positive. If both those numbers are positive, you guys with me? Yeah. Both those numbers are positive. Where are sine and cosecant positive? S, S, S. and where? A. Okay. So now think about it. <clears throat> cotangent is less than zero. What did you tell me that cotangent? If it's less than zero, where are the two places? That means negative. Where are the two places that cotangent would be negative? S and T. No. Only S. Tangent and cotangent. Where are they positive? Where are the T? And? And A. So what are they telling me about the X value? It has to be an S. It's got to be an S. That's correct. But what does it have to be? Oh. Negative. Negative. If I go to, into the second quadrant, my X value is negative. You guys, I'll re, want me, look, let's re, I'll re-explain it. We always have to talk, think about what they're giving us. If they give me that cosecant and sine, right, those are the same things, it's positive. You guys with me? You understand why I'm saying it's, that, that, that's positive. Where are the two, what, what two letters are where sine and cosecant are positive? First quadrant, agreed, because it's all of them. And the second quadrant, correct? Cross this off. So then the second thing they tell me, the constraint is where cotangent, which also goes with tangent, is negative, less than zero. With what we have left, where is cotangent and tangent negative? S. S, because what happens in the first quadrant? It's all what? Everything's, Everything's positive. So that means my X value is positive. I mean, I'm sorry, my X value is negative and my y value is positive. So I can go ahead before I even figure out what the x value is and say whatever number I get, since I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be squared, is going to be a negative number. Yes? So now we use the Pythagorean theorem, we find out what our x value is, then we fill in all of our trig functions. Correct? Okay. If I go down here, this is the main thing we need to focus on is, oh, I already did this one. Sorry. Got a double. All right, reference angles. I'm not having you guys draw them, but you are going to calculate them. You have to think about what quadrant the angle is that you're talking about. If it's in the first quadrant, if my angle that I'm given is in the first quadrant, what do I know theta is equal to? The angle. If we're in quadrant two, what's the rule? 180 minus theta. If we're in quadrant three, what's the rule? Theta minus 180, good. Quadrant four, what's the rule? 360 minus theta. My reference angle will always be two things. What are those two things that will always, always, always be? Positive and acute, good. So I look here. These should be gimmies, guys. These should be easy ones. Where is 215? What quadrant? It's over here, right? <coughs> okay, it's in quadrant 3. What's the rule for quadrant 3? All right, so 215 minus 180. What is 215 minus 180? How much is it? Okay, so your reference angle is 35 degrees. If I start off in degrees, what should my answer be in? degrees. If I start off in radians, what should my answer be in? Radians. radians. What, where is 315? What quadrant? Four. Quadrant 4. What's the rule for quadrant 4? Four? It's 360 minus. What's 360 minus 15? 315. 45. I started off in degrees, so I do what? End in degrees. Good. <clears throat> Couple more. I want to do this last one and then we'll be good. 332. If I was in radians, what would I switch to first? Degrees. Then just figure it out, go back to radians. But if I have 332, where is 332? Quadrant four. Quadrant four. Yes? Quadrant four is 332. What is the rule for quadrant four? 
360 minus 332, what is that? 28 degrees, okay. All right, let's, let's not worry about a negative right now. Let's just, for, uh, yeah, you just, yeah. Cause it's just direction. I'll talk about it in a second. But how do I do this? What do I do, guys? Convert to degrees. So I'm going to say pi 180. Pi cancels out, right? 3 goes in here. 60? So I get 120 degrees. What quadrant is that? That's quadrant 2. What's the rule for quadrant 2? 180 minus 120 is how much? 60 degrees. What did I start off with? Radian. So what do I need to end up in? That means I convert back. So 6 goes into 180 how many times? So it's pi over 3. If you start off in radians, guys, go back to radians. With me? Okay. Let's go down to these two. <clears throat> the last question on each test is going to say something like this. Find sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle without using a calculator. You have to use reference angles for this. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Find the reference angle. <clears throat> for a question like this, find the reference angle first. So what would I do? Convert to what? Degrees, okay. So pi's cancel out. Four goes into 180, what, 45 times? So five times 45 is 225, okay? If I want to find the trig functions, Without using a calculator, without using the unit circle. Because you won't have either of those things. You can't just look and find the ordered pair. You have to use reference angles. So if I was going to find the reference angle to 225, what quadrant is 225 in? So what's the rule for 3? 225 minus 180. Okay, so what do I get? 45. Every single time you do this, you will get either 45, 60, or 30. So what do you think you're going to have to use? The 45, the, the special right triangles. You've got to know the patterns. Okay, so let me show you how this works. What quadrant did you tell me that we were looking at? Quadrant 3. So some of you will want to draw it like this. Some of you will just be able to think. But if I'm in quadrant 3, it's something like that, correct? Yes? Okay, my right angle is right here. 45, that's the angle that, this is our reference angle. So what is the pattern for 45, 45, 90? Like one, it's 1, two, it's, it's one, 1, 1, and then what? Two. Root 2. Root two yeah. Okay, that's the pattern. You guys agree with me? The x and the y, the legs are 1, 1, root 2. What do you guys know about the signs? Since I'm in quadrant 3, what is the sign on both of the legs, the x and the y? Signs, like positive or negative? Oh, negative? From the origin, I went left one, right? Left. So it's negative one. And then I went where? Down. Down one. Now you guys can find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. The sine of theta. Well, what's sine? Uh, what over what? It's y over r. Well, what is my y? What's the y value, guys? What's, what's the, the side that goes up and down? Negative 1 over what? Root 2. Can I leave that? So this is negative root 2 over 2. That's your sine of theta. Cosine of theta is what over what? x over r. Well, what's the x value? How many did I go left and right? I went negative 1. What's the r? So this again works out to be what? Negative root 2 over 2. Good. And then what's the tangent? How do you find tangent? Y over x. Well, what's y? Over x is gives me positive 1. 
it'll either be a 45, 45, 90, or it'll be a 30, 60, 90, like the second one that we're going to do. <laughs> but if you know the pattern, guys, 1, 1, radical 2, what's the other pattern? 1, radical 3, one, 2, radical and radical 3. But you just have to know, they're gonna, once you figure out what quadrant it's in, that's how you know what's negative and what's positive. What do you know the hypotenuse always will be? Positive. positive. Okay, so if I look at the second one, first thing I got to do is convert, right? Mm -hmm. So pi's cancel out. Six goes into 180. How much? 30. 30. 30. So what is seven times 30? 210. What quadrant are we in? Uh, right away, when you think quadrant three, what do you know about the x value and the y value? Negative. They're both negative. Good. What's the rule to find the reference angle when you're in quadrant three? Minus 180, what do I get? 30. Is it 30 or 60? 30. Good. 30, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I did. I was not thinking. So I'm in quadrant three, right? It's the same looking triangle, but what is the angle right here? 30. So what's across from the 30? Is it one, is it two, or is it root three? The hypotenuse is always root two. Root two. <laughs> smallest side. What's across from the smallest side? The one. You guys have to know this pattern. What's across from the hypotenuse? Two. Two. What goes across from the 60? Root three. root three. And now what do I know about the signs on one and root three? Negative. Both negative. Now you guys can tell me the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Sine of theta. What is sine again? Y over R. So what's the Y value or what's the R? Negative one, Negative one over? Okay. Yep. Cosine theta. X over R, correct? Okay. So what's the X? Negative root three over? Okay. What's the tangent of theta? Y over X. Okay. Well, what's my Y? Negative 1 over negative, negative root 3. Guys, right away, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. positive. i got to rationalize, right? So this becomes root 3 over 3. You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to know the patterns. It's much easier, I know, when it's a 45, 45, 90. It's 1, 1, square to 2. If it's a 30, 60, 90, it's 1, 2, Square root of 3. Just think, the smallest side goes with the smallest number. What's the smallest number in 1, 2, square root of 3? 1. Oh, Josh. Whew. All right. I will upload this.